Hello, hi buddies. Hey, um, what's up, of course, and welcome to the UBL D League semifinals versus Yet and his Kamalas. I faced this guy before, and I didn't upload the team preview because I really, really, really didn't want to reveal too much about the game since I actually lost that game. It's it's one of those things like I did recall versus Fum, and I stayed roughly. Um, in that same idea, so that would still have been the upload with the fun brother. So I decided effectively to avoid it, and it has to do with that I was revealed more likely to be able to force to be facing him, depending on the game was going versus him and Blazing. Blazing lost, of course, versus the cursed Norlax, um, and and that was basically it. I facing Jet again the week after, and also should say against uh, Skyman Shamans that. Uh, unfortunately, she had to forfeit. It is unfortunate because, well, I do end up 7-2, which is quite alright, actually. It left a league, a good league record overall, I say. Um, I still believe I would not I would appreciate ending 6-3, if that makes sense, and get some more kills for the MVP. Conkeldor did actually end up winning, but, um, you know, apparently the last two games were also going to matter, so the semifinals, so... The Mega Kangaskhan, which is very, very close behind it, same records, could pass it. Uh, so uh, I need to bring Conkeldor to this game. <laughs> but overall, like I said, there, versus yet, the game didn't turn out all that well. I lost a crit very early on, and I didn't have the defensive measures to kind of um, pivot that around. And I, I actually found I brought a pretty good defensive team. And for my money, uh, I think Crawdon as a first switch in versus me was a great way for me of spamming a Leaf Storm to be able to get rid of Crawdon and get, well, a very, very good offensive matchup. Um, I really want to enforce that aspect that, for, for my money, the right play was to stay in and knock out Crawdon because that meant that Thunderous, for example, wouldn't effortlessly do really well in that matchup and Ace of Two. Um, but yeah, hands that didn't go away as well as I was planning for. And it's alright, but it also meant that all of a sudden I needed to potentially meet this team again instead of knocking it out. So that was that was honestly tough. Uh, that said, his team is as follows: Celestila, Garchomp, Crodon, Snorlax, Marowak, the Alolan form, Yuxi, Zarina, Vikavolt, Gaboror, Girder, and Mega Um I should go straight on at it and say as it is. Uh, there are only so many Pokemons I'm gonna predict coming. The ones are definitely not making it for this matchup are Gabodor and Girder. They are not built for this matchup whatsoever. And that's my intent. Like Girder is the, the inferior form of Conkeldur. If the team has a Conkeldur, that means that you are the inferior Pokemons on the field and that's going to be tough to deal with. And of course the, po po the Pokemons that are definitely gonna make it are Celesteela, Godchomp, Mega Dayanshi, Crawdon, Snorlax. And they are coming no matter what. If he want to win this game, those are the five he needs to bring. And I think, or due to a previous game, that he had to win that game, which means he did bring what I think is his ideal matchup. So I have some merits here. I just didn't get to scout what they were, um, which sucks a lot. Uh, but yeah, going over the team, I, just, I, said, I feel I rambled too much already. But first and foremost, uh, Conkeldor is going to come here. Um, Overall, it's a very good Pokemon here. It's an adamant variant because I do want to pressure Snorlax as much as I can. Uh, and it's naturally very, very bulky on its own right. Uh, stat distribution, we have 86 in this HP. Um, it really is nothing to it. It's just going to get that mixed bulk and be able to take an Outrage and uh, then Drain Punch back to uh, above uh, Outrage damage. If it's the all it is, if it's adamant, then it's going to be tougher. 172, while not ideal it is the most i need um 238 special defense is to soak damage from celestila soak damage from mega dnc vika vault yuxi all that jazz and um, potentially girder wins versus celestila and also verse where versus mega dnc if i am above 70 percent so that's quite interesting uh i didn't check for that in our previous matchup because i never intended concluded to stand versus mega dnc but it actually is able to soak damage against that so, that's what we're gonna do. <laughs> Attacks here, however, is um, pretty standard. I do avoid Ice Punch here. I go directly for Drain Punch, Knock Off, Fire Punch, Mach Punch. Fire Punch is there for Zarina, is there for Vikavolt, and is specifically there for Celesteela. It is better coverage than Ice Punch, which would have done neutral damage to it. But the thing is here, 
Ice Punch would only be effective versus my own right for Godchamp, which necessarily doesn't win against me one versus one. Because Rain, I could potentially, like I said, on set, I am defensive enough to take an Outrage, recover enough to go for another Drain Punch against it, and then wrap up with a Mock Punch combination. So, Conkeldor is quite alright this matchup. Um, it's not the best Pokemon here, but it is a Pokemon that so can retaliate, and it can do that for a while, and it definitely means as, as long as Conkeldor is active, um, that Snorlax isn't potentially a threat, even if it is Curse Set. Uh, so that's worth keeping in mind. The other Pokemon making it is um, Scissor, and I didn't bring Scissor last time because I didn't want to reveal my idea of what role Scissor is going to play that game if we're going to face each other again. Uh, I decided to take a self instead, which was a more offensive variant, uh, able to pivot. This is a slower variant, but with aspects to actually deal with the match acquire right. Uh, it's an adamant variant, but not with a lot of H or attack investment, but it does have attack investment. Um, the defense combination here is to be able to soak damage from pretty much everything. Um, potentially guard chomp, for example, and outrage should do under 50% um, if it is to follow up with a confusion. Um, should be able to take anything from Snorlax, uh, unless or, or pre-setup, which is a fire punch does around 70%. If it is one curse behind it, it's going to kill me. Uh, but that's about it. I don't have a special defense investment. I have no intention for Celesteela to outspeed me, nor stand in against it. Um, and the speed investment is only to outspeed Crawdont. Uh We do naturally outspeed the um, Alolan Marowak too, but that Pokemon is walling this set because I optimize for U-turn over knockoff. Uh, and that's going to be a thing. If, if that Pokemon is there, it's going to be tough, but I don't see Marowak as a potential threat. Uh, bullet Punch, U-Turn, Superpower is close to a complete combination. Uh, the reason for U-Turn is for one reason. I do want to pipe it out of Celesteela. I want to bait it in, then I want to get out. And uh, that's going to be the whole idea behind it. Uh, that goes for every Pokemon, basically. But since we do outspeed Crawdon, that means he's going to have a defensive play every time. Uh, we don't outspeed Yuxi. Um, hopefully that doesn't have enough power fire. If I face a Yuxi, I'm going to force switch out against that. Just scout for that. I don't want any residual damage and roost, of course, because we do want to pivot and be defensive, even though we have a lot of HP or yeah, uh, attack investment. I mean, uh, we still want to have some defensive aspect because Sister has naturally very good bulk, and we're going to try to capitalize on that. Uh, next Pokemon, same set as previously, but with superpower over crunch this time. Um, it's a standard Habenberry um, Slapbog or Psygod. Uh, able to deal with guard chump if things get nasty uh, because we do outspeed it at least so that's that's nice um, attack series as well fast narrow superpower outright dragon dance and its attribution is basically offensive with enough speed to outspeed um uh, what, ooh, what do you call it um mega energy that's it um and then basically just a mixed defensive combination it really is nothing to it um my third Pokemon is the Fundy, and it's um, offensive Fundy as physical offensive. I was debating which set I was going to bring, but decided since he was specially offensively shaking me with the previous matchup, I decided that he's probably going to do the same thing here. Uh, so it's better for me of actually having a physical Thunderous instead. Uh, <clears throat> it's both good and bad, because the damage distribution is... Not as high as a special variant. I just this should definitely say that, but if I am behind a bulk gap, a Crawdon's offer just will do roughly 50%. So it could work. Um the only Pokemon we can set up against effectively are Celestial, of course. And uh, just bulk up kinda makes sure that I avoid if Garchomp being scarfed, that outrage will knock me out from 60%. It it's a shaky situation at best, but basically what I came down with was that I wanna check Alolan Marowak, and I do that better with knockoff than with Dark Poles, and I need superpowers with a fight MC combination with the superpower. Uh, this is basically just to knock out Snorlax directly if it comes in. Uh, predicting, of course, that Thunder is going to be special, and uh, this time I really is, am expecting Snorlax to be an Assault Fence variant because it just makes so much sense for the matchup, so that's my intent. Um, and we'll just hope this works. It's like I said, it's not the ideal Thunder set. Um, I'll, I'll lie if I say that that's the idea, but I do believe it's going to throw him off guard, and that's that means something for me. <laughs> um, the last sets here are my defensive walls here. Um, Jellicent, Calm with the Colbert Berry. 
Um, this set is only one here for one reason. Um, it can defensively stall um, a Celestila. Uh, it can defensively stall Yuxi. It can defensively stall a Cursed Snorlax if I'm forced to. And of course, negate its setup. It also can defensively stall a Girder with Bulk Up. It has a lot of merits to this set. Um, really aren't that many things on this back. Then uh, I am a Calm variant with enough HP and defense to be able to take a adamant banded <laughs> knockoff from full HP. Uh, basically if I'm uh, I can only survive with roughly 10% afterwards so it's going to be a risk because I can't win versus Crawdon but I can disrupt it because our way of attacking are only Scald and then I will always taunt and recover. Um, Crawdon is coming in on this Pokemon freely that's not going away the only thing I can try to take away from it is that we can taunt it so it doesn't go for sword sets, we can will o it or skull burn it. Um, that's that's the intent. Um, this is a stall breaker jealous and that's all it is. Its main role here is to make sure that no matter what passive Pokemon he has, that jealous and win against them all. Um, it's basically as simple as that. The only thing I'm fearing is Marowak because well, of course, Skull is not going to do a whole lot of damage to that. Even though Marowak isn't having a whole special attack or special events, it still will not be knocked out here. Um, that's kind of all I'm fearing. And of course, Vikavolt can set up agility versus this, and that would be nasty. Um, but I don't see Vikavolt making it. Um, if it does, it does. But yeah. Uh, and last Pokemon. Same Pokemon as last time. Um, this is... Uh, I would say... A Tangrowth made to fucking work this time around. This Pokemon was the difference between me winning or losing last time, and I believe it fills the same role again. This time, however, I am not heavily specially defensive because fuck you, Jet. I have 32 in my use <laughs> in my defense to survive a crit knockoff. Let's see. That's that's what's the difference between winning or losing last time. Uh, I feel damn. That's tough. It's such a I shouldn't be forced to be prepping for that, but hence here we are. Special defense here are made to deal with Celestila's flamethrowers, and we got the energy's moon lasts. And a defense investment overall really, really just makes it impossible for Garchomp to win versus me one versus one, unless we have a Sword Dance variant of the Garchomp. But then again, it isn't as threatening if it is. Um, besides that, the only Pokemon forcing Tangrowth out would be Vikavolt. Um, my builder is not designed to deal with Vika Vault, and I was debating back and forth should I focus blast and then knock off or and whatnot. I decided for a quake just to really, 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 really get that gir girder if it is on the field, and of course, Marowak if I'm forced to. Knock off is not going to be as effective, it's simple as that. But leave Storm here to get it with hidden power, ice, focus blast, and earthquake. For Tangra Fair, I feel I have a fourth mood slot situation where I don't believe I have an ideal set, but this is as close as it's gonna get, and it's basically it's dependent on the matchup my opponent brings. And no matter what it brings, I'm going to have one move wrong, I feel, so it's fine. Um like for me, I'm I should say it already. Like I already said the matchup I'm predicting, and I'm I'm pretty sure it's gonna stay to the same team. Like I'm predicting Potentially being, being between Yuxi and Marowak. The, other, the Pokemon's gonna make it are Celestia, Garchomp, Crawlon, Snorlax, and uh, Mega the Energy. Those five gotta make it, and then it is y either Yuxi or Marowak as a potential Stealth Rockers. I don't see Vikavolt coming. Um, I, I, I effectively have avoided prepping for it because I don't see the reason for actually bringing it. Uh, so there are things here that could be kind of shaky if that comes. Um, but besides that, like my intent here is to set up as early as I can. I feel our previous game didn't reveal anything for me, or at least not enough. So I feel I am in the same spot as previous time, where I just... I don't know if I can win or not. And uh, Jet has, you know, I, I looked through... Uh, it must have been a, like a eight, nine games from him, just to see how he plays. I hope we get something out of it. But he plays so differently. Um... Certain matchup he stays in against, other he stay, doesn't stay in against, and I don't know if the prepping is because he's been like very very cocky and predicting a switch, or if he just doesn't know certain situations and what they mean. But with that, it doesn't matter how he plays. Um, I really want to enforce that that I wouldn't call 
his way of playing bad, but rather the way he just think makes him very, very, very dangerous, because if he gets into your head, he's in a very, very dangerous place, and he does really well there, M much like Marl, I feel, when he plays very well, it's very hard to beat him, um, and I, that's tough when you watch an other player play, and you see that they are shuffling between play styles, it's, it's impossible to do this matchup justice, and that's what makes my opponent here very dangerous. Um, I'll try to say it in the best way with the few English words I know, but basically, yeah, if I'm gonna if I'm gonna narrate it as a boxing match, I'll say his jabbing isn't as much worth as his punches that actually knocks you out, Art. I mean, he, he can push you back, but his intent is to knock you out. That's the only thing I have in my mind. So with that said, I'm going to this time go for early setup. I need to wall break his team, and I need to check his defensive aspects early. Um, so I feel all of my Pokemon here are copy paste set of a playstyle instead of uh, my my initial thought what I wanted to do. This is a th these sets are built to disrupt him, to throw him back, to make sure that he doesn't feel comfortable going for offensive moves. But as long as he doesn't feel like going offensive, I have the game under control. Um, if it goes on offensive, I need to swift and early respond to that and stop the momentum. And it's whether or not I can do that because. It, Eventually, in theory, if he will downs my team with enough Pokemon, Crawdon, in theory, can sweep me. Like, I can't lose Jellicent here, for example, because that means Aqua Jet could potentially sweep me. And I can't lose Conkeldur because it means Snorlax can curse set up against me. Those aspects are gonna matter. And, um, like, I've thrown myself back and forth how I was gonna check this, and I feel this is a team that's gonna pull that off. So, we'll basically see how these games go. We had a problem... Um, uh, planning for one another like we're gonna face each other on Thursday night for me or Friday morning for him and it's the ma majority of the reason it's tough is because we are I think it is like 10 or 11 hours apart but also that my work is of course kicking in and the ruin stuff that's that's nice um, but but I need my labor I need my money <laughs> <laughs> but but that said, um, I feel like we both are pushing ourselves to play in a very, very unconventional time, so I really hope that it does work in my favor, because like I said there, if he plays this game right, it's going to be just as tough, if not tougher, as it was last time, because yet it's a very, very strong battler, and uh, I really need to keep tabs on how he decides to play this game. Because if I get that right, I could potentially disrupt him. But if I don't, he's going to win early. And I'm very aware of that. So with that said, I'm going to have a, some kind of transition here. And you'll see the game itself. We're going to play this game in two days. It's going to be great. <laughs> anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Take care. So, all right. Yeah. Um, I had the game. I'm going to post-narrate it. Because like I said here... Uh, we had the game fairly late, and well, my daughter and my fiance actually went to sleep as we waited to actually battle. It, it wasn't overly late, but you know, being being grown up means that we actually go to sleep around 10 p.m. So that's that's how cool we are. <laughs> but yeah, um, the matchup, like I said in the video, is close to what I was expecting. There are only a few things standing out, and that was that there actually is an Alola Marowak here on the field. It's an issue, like, straight on at it, I really, really, really didn't need or know what I would, um, what I would lead off with. I was considering Sargod, and I was heavily considered uh, leading with Tangaroth again, but remembered that he predicted Tangaroth quite nicely last time, and I felt I'm gonna avoid that. Uh, I also considered Conkeldur, but since I am Iron Fist and not Guts, um, I don't want to be in a situation where I face an Alolan Marowak, it does have Spearman and Willow with me. Um, because that would ruin me, so I decided I'm gonna lead off with Scissor, um, and I'm gonna take things from there because that's that's the best I got at this point. Uh, I should also say this was a longer game than I expected, uh, and I'm gonna try to narrate everything that happened from my perspective. Um, this was a very, very I, I'll say it already a very strong game from both sides, and oof, I really, really hate facing the same teams again. I, I'm glad Jetman is person I battled again because the game itself that we had wasn't revealing anything for us. I guess that's fine in his own merits, but it also meant that uh, I knew in theory his ideal matchup and uh, I was building heavily around that. 
And um, the Alola Marowak, of course, throws me off due to this very reason. So keep that in mind, if anything. So yeah, with all that said, let's go into the match. So from the first turn here, my opponent actually leads off with the Marowak. And that was tough because, well, since I lead off with Scissor, I am and then eff effectively actually negated to have knockoff. I knew that he had a first turn momentum no matter what was going to happen here. So I felt his ideal play was either go for Flare Blitz or go for Stealth Frog. So I'm going to send him the Saigot here. Uh, I should get enough ship here, I think, to be able to knock it out afterwards. A Thousand Arrows is still a Thousand Arrows and I am full offensive. <clears throat> and a U-turn showcase that is... At least not fully bulky, but it is absolutely bulkier. Uh, so I thought I was going to take that risk no matter what. So I sit in Slap Bog, and um, well, my opponent goes for knockoff. And what that means is that, uh, well, I'll be honest, uh, that I can't win it versus Garchomp unless I am plus two at this point because I cannot speed it depending on if it is uh, a Scarf set or not. But it doesn't matter. I don't knock off the Marowak here <laughs> and retaliate with a Will O Wisp. And this was so tough, because effectively here, Saigar was wasted turn 1, or 3 I guess. And there was really nothing could do, as uh, I tried to be chic here, I went for Dragon Dance in case I think that if I knock him out, I at least can force to see if his guard should be scarred or not, because I'll speed the rest, right? Um, as it says in Celesteela, which I thought was weird at first, but I think, right, he probably gonna autonomize, he has something offensively here to check me with. So I go for the Thousand Arrows, I should do a fair amount of damage still, even though he is at minus one in theory. Um, but he has Lead Seed, so like, alright, this is a Stolier Celesteela. Uh, the next Thousand Arrows should do roughly 50%, and it actually lost or misses the Lead Seed here, which was great for me, because it means I can actually keep on attacking, as this time it does well over half. And I was very surprised he stayed in here, and he told me afterwards that he didn't know the Calx in Showdown showcase only when it is floating, not when it's down. So he thought he was well within range of dealing with this matchup. Now I'm predicting a Protect here to be able to of course, stall me out, since of course Protect plus Burn do close to knocking me out here. Then I was not thinking it was gonna sack play this Pokemon, but in theory he actually is, because he decides to go for a Flash Cairn here, as I thought he was gonna Protect. And he scores a crit on me. Now, this is quite right, because I was feeling right, he's gonna switch out now, right? Because I get a free setup here in theory, and he will lose Celesteel if I attack him. Well, he does stay in as I go for the bulk up. And what's tough with this is that, you know, I of course now with the flamethrower attacking on me, am now in range where an Aqua Jet will knock me out on Crodont. But I was thinking, right. I'll take you with me now, Elise. I, I need to do that. As he switches out, he goes to his land shark to guard chomp. It's going to crawl chomp, but no guard chomp. And uh, effectively, he negated all of my both of my setup Pokemon's by actually just staying in versus matchup that should have knocked him out. And that was so tough. Uh, so I'm on the back foot already. Luckily, though, guard chomp is a standard guard chomp and is potentially scarfed the way he actually brought it in. And I sent in Tangrow to be able to soak the damage, and it does like Quarite as it goes for an Earthquake. I am still on a back foot, aren't I? Yeah, this was not a good series of first turns, I'll tell you that already. I'm having a very hard time being offensive here. As I switched into my Necromedusa, I just, like, eventually I decided that, you know, I, I need to start just disrupt things instead. Try to negate whatever Celestia is doing, because it's getting back. It's. I went from actually. Having it to be able to knock out any time I wanted, to it's back on top to not be able to force get knocked out, and and this is ruining me as it goes for a lead seed here. Now I did predict that to an extent. I was feeling I want to see if I Giga Drain or not. Uh, at least by having it Will O Wisp, I negate its uh, leftovers recovery. I do want to go for knockoff in theory, and I should have done that with Tangrowth uh, if I had that, but I had Earthquake instead. Still kick myself over that. Uh, but I can't do anything here, so I'm gonna bring in Gaithar yet again. Because this time I just I want the damage on it. And I was predicting like flash cannon was flash cannon flame for either way, but this is stab and I should be able to actually soak that. Um and now I'm gonna go for my fight UMC. Like I don't care. I I'm I'll let this Celestia knock me out as long as I get this damage onto it. Now I was fearing is bringing in his Alola Marowak and was switching out. Luckily for me, he goes to his Mega the Inchi, or in this form the Inchi. Now, the unfortunate part about going for all our pummeling here with Thunderous uh, with the engine in his base form is that 
it is staying in his base form. That's a lot more defensive there, so I won't be able to do as much damage as I want to, but I should say the good part about this is that even if he stays in now, he has to Mega Evolve and then Superpower will be enough to knock him out. So I actually get the energy out of the way first, and who knew? The first Pokemon getting knocked out are not one of my Pokemon. No, that's him. That's good. That's that's way better than it went last time. Um, that said, like I said, I still have two Pokemon that are, well, in all sense and purposes, dead by default. Both Thunderous and Saigar can't do anything. And he brings in the Land Shark this time around. And um, I, like I said, the way he brings it in, yeah, it has to be Scarfed. So I'm bringing in Bo Raichu uh, just to see what he goes for. Uh, he decided to go for an outrage, so now we know he's locked into that. And it does a fair amount of damage. It actually does more than a Fire Fang do. Uh, but I'm not going to get any more skill damage here. I just want to see what he locks himself into. Go into Fulgore, soak any damage he wants to. And the only positive part about Up or of course Mega Evolving early is that we have that defense boost from the Sea Sword. Now, here's the thing though. Um, I decided to actually. I think I decided instead of going for U turn to switch out directly. Uh, the main reason for that was just in case he was being cheeky, but no, this kind of confirms it. It is Scarf. And we actually get Slackbog <laughs> versus the Celesteela, which is quite right. Um, but the thing is here, yeah, we effectively ensure that this Celesteela is gonna get fully HP'd now. Now, I'm predicting him to go for Lead Seed. There's no reason for him not to do that. As I'm gonna bring in Tangrowth, and then I'm gonna switch out Tangrowth and go to Jellicent and taunt it. Uh, my main idea here was that he can't, in theory, attack Tangrowth that well anyway. Flame, flame um, probably shouldn't do that much damage anyway. It should do, I think it was roughly above 50%. But then I have to be like 50-50 whether or not I can connect a Focus Blast or not. So I felt Jellicent was better as he switched, of course, goes to Flame Thrower. It doesn't do anything. Um, it shouldn't. And um, this time I go for Taunt instead of, a, of course, Will-O-Wisp. I have no reason not to go for Will-O-Wisp. And um, I guess I'm in theory showcasing him that um, I can't necessarily attack him all that well. I can only disrupt him. I can make sure that Celesteela can't beat. As a um, elite stalling Celesteela can't beat a, a stall breaker Jellicent. So I got followed up with a skull thinking that he would actually switch out. But it does stay in. Um, which I guess is fine. But also at the same time I felt... He was going to predict me to recover or try to get some kind of new momentum of getting Snorlax, try to be cheeky with that. As um, now I'll of course go for recover. I was fearing don't switch out, 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 switch out. <laughs> Which is luckily of course it doesn't do that. I think it goes with Flash, can hold for a special defense drop. It's not like that's going to matter in theory because it does 15 damage to me. What is that? Uh, I guess in 20. Um, but yeah, I'm a spot here where I can be very well. Now, the taunt will wore off. I was thinking, right, he's gonna switch out here. He's gonna predict me to go for another um, another taunt here. As it goes to Fist, the Crawdaunt, and I went for a Skull, but, well, I need a burn here to, of course, stop him. And I'm not able to get that. And while I can take a knockout from this range, I won't risk Yellicent just yet. As uh, I, of course, sack my Slapbog, my Psyguard. I don't know what it is with Psyguard this season. Um... It just, it, I wouldn't say it's a disappointment, but I haven't got it to work. It just, it's been good for matchup, yet it just fails on me. Uh, now, I am, of course, with Scissor able to force this Pokemon out, and of course, I know the Celesteela is gonna come in, but this time, I am going for a U turn. And while two series of superpowers would knock this Pokemon out, I know exactly which Pokemon that will knock it out the Conk. Yeah, I was thinking, fuck it. You know, you've been cheeky all this time standing against matchups that are threatening you. Let's see if you can do that versus Conk, because you're well within range of my Fire Punch. And yeah, he stays for Lead Seed, thinking probably that I have only Drain Punch, but no, you are out of here, boy. Away with the Metal Beast. Um, so yeah, we knocked that out, and now we're bringing Recarnation, and I was fearing like he could go for a Willow Wisp here. And I thought I was able to outspeed, but no, he actually outspeed Tangrowth, but he actually went for Stealth Rock, which was great. Um, because that would have been a big misplay from my side. Consider how we get this Pokemon Will O Wisp, I potentially couldn't dealt with his Snorlax. So he goes to Land Shark now, and um, I did say in my, pre in my build video that I was designed to be able to take an Outrage uh, and then Drain Punch Retaliate to get enough HP back. 
And while that's to an extent true, uh, what I failed to realize here is one aspect, Lead Seed. Um, now I did consider that I had Lead Seed, it was whether or not I was going to recover enough to um, be in range of Survival and Outrage. I am not at this point, I need to switch out. Folgor naturally does resolve this situation and um, I'll be honest and say, like in theory, he Outrage can't knock me out, we know him, his scarf already. Uh, so I can easily here just go for Roost. The only thing here, the difference between me winning or losing is a crit uh, from his side, but he knocks himself he knocks himself in confusion. I get the Roost off. And from this point on, it should take a lot for my opponent to be able to win this. Um, all of his three remaining Pokemon can't, in theory, deal with to make a Scissor, uh, depending on the situation. Now, that said, uh, I decided to go for a U-turn here, thinking that he knew he needed to switch out because he's... He's in a situation where I just win, uh, but no, he stays in, and what that basically meant is that I stack Thunderous here, I'm, differential doesn't matter anyway, and I'm bringing back the Scissor, and just keep on roosting instead, and get into a good range of HP before I knock this Pokemon out. He is, of course, having the intent of staying in, that means that I should consider the same. Uh, so while it goes from Outrage here, as you guys see, it does 40-ish damage, it's, it's alright. Um, so I'll just keep on roosting. I feel this type of play is so far from how I really want to play a game, but at this point I need to secure a win. And I need to secure a win versus a player that offensively is doing a lot better than me. Uh, so, and the only thing he has left now is uh, his offensive ways with the Route 2 with his remaining Pokemon, barring Garchomp. Um, the issue I feel here with Snorlax is depending on what set it is. Um, so I felt that my best play here is, like I said, of course staying in, but also versus, uh, depending on what comes in, which was Snorlax, um, I think my best play was just going directly for a U-turn, and uh, from there, uh, go into Conkeldor, knowing like, if it is a curse set, I can recover versus that quite effortlessly, or if it is the Belldrum set again, I should be close to knocking it out, I sh but uh, yeah, it is the Belldrum set. <sighs> This was scary at first, as soon as I realized that, you know, I, I still outspeed this. Um, so while I can't knock it out, I can still do a significant amount of damage to it. And, uh, well, that's my intent, for all sense and purposes. And the Drain Punch does... Yeah, it, it does a lot, though. It does a lot. But a six, plus six facade is gonna knock me out. But my opponent actually went for a Fire Punch. Uh, and while, for the life of me, I can't necessarily think of why he did that, uh, I also at the same time realized that, you know, it's... It's in theory fine, this game is in the bag, since it isn't able to curse up or anything like that. He can't defensively check Scissor, so had he knocked out my uh, Conkeldor, I would have followed up with Scissor and just you know, Bullet Punch or whatever, and uh, then followed that up with a Superpower and, uh, and then a U-turn on Crawdon. Now, we don't get that chance, and um, I actually decided to, since I already have this game in the bag, to bring in Tangrove and show in how this first turn or not last game really should have been and this is with the build that should be able to survive a crit, but this is what Knockout should have done, and this is what the following turn should have done to his Cronaunt. Just gonna say it, had this game gone like this the first time we faced one another, I think we would have had a very different first game. We do win 4-0, and I, I'll say we win because we got at least the last part right. So alright, I do want to leave the game with some afterthoughts, and really what I meant by the ending. Um, the thing is here, my opponent, from the first 10 turns, he, he has the game to win, like, he he does everything right, and um, I, much like last time game, really got, well, a lot behind here, I really did. The difference here was that my, I didn't lose my defensive Pokemon, I lost my offensive Pokemon. So it was up to him to figure out how to beat my defensive aspects, and I guess things turned around the second I got the uh, Alal Pummeling versus the NG. That was a crucial play. Uh, but just also, like, he let his Celestila get whittled down. Um, like, if I think about the game myself, you know, going back to it, uh, if I had knocked out Celestila early with Saigard, I don't know how this game would have turned about. I'm a feeling I would have had a much stronger matchup here overall versus him. And um, it just feels strange knowing that I potentially ruined myself for something that could have been great for me. It was not like it was gonna, f how do you say? He was not gonna guarantee knock me out if he protects Stalmir. 
Uh, he had to go for two protects to get that, but actually found out later he's a substitute Celesteela, which he had versus Blazin. So I, I'm I'm kicking myself over that because I definitely feel uh, not only was that a um, risky play from his side, but also realizing that I have an opportunity of dealing with Celesteela a lot earlier than I ended up doing. And um, I'm happy Kong Elder came through. Uh, <laughs> like, that has to be a thing. Kong Elder just booming the Celesteela eventually with Fire Punch. Um, I, I felt that it took a lot, a lot long, longer time than I wanted to um, to get that. Though, the whole idea with Scissor was to bait in Celesteela. Once that happened, I didn't have the Pokemon that was gonna beat Celestila um, active. So, but I'm very happy Con Keller came through and did what it did. Uh, it did. It was wonderful. Um, I was very happy with that result. That said, though, I really need to have to say that yet. Like I, I said it in my previous video, um, um, or I mean in my planner, that he plays a lot uneven, but that's not the case. I feel he takes a few risks and a few liberties and he throws people off. He threw me off. The first turns for me didn't work at all. Once I did play a more passive game, it worked better for me, but I wouldn't say it worked... Like, I, I never had a steadfast point to the game until Celesteel was knocked out. Until then, I had nothing to this game. Um, if I had to say one thing that I was happy about, it was the Jellicent function here. Uh, while it didn't showcase through and through what it wanted to, uh, it did do something that I definitely felt I, I was happy to see showcase, and that was the st stall breakers, you know, walling Pokemon that are supposed to be walling you. I think mm, that's it's a wonderful thing to see. I hate being passive, but if you be more passive than a passive Pokemon, it's it looks kind of nice. <laughs> but yeah, overall, the Jetman, I just really want to say thank you for the game itself. I appreciate having a hacks free game and I absolutely appreciate uh, banning you again knowing what caliber you really are um, I would have been fine losing this game I feel the way I was getting behind in the beginning of the game was enough for me to be able to just fuck it this is why he is in playoff uh, he got the better of me but well I got the better of him um, <laughs> and a relatively Hacks free game, to be honest. He missed a lead ceiling on a crit flash cannon. It's that's where all that happens. I think that's fine. Um so make sure of course to check him out and his side as well. He did record his live, and I'm definitely gonna appreciate and absolutely watch that game just to see how he was thinking. Because I do wanna see how he narrated through some of the tougher plays with Celestila, because in the end of the day, you know, he is the one that gets the play right. Even if it is a risky play, it is the right play. So it's impressive at best. Uh, so that's the guy. Thank you, of course, for watching and join us next week for the finals. I actually don't know who it is, but I have, I have my, I have my fears that it is our first week game. But if it is, it's gonna be the battle of the north. And if it isn't, it's gonna be a battle of the coasts. Uh, I'm fine with either seeing you there, Ash, smuggling your plans. So, guys, thank you for watching, of course. And uh, I'll see you next week. Till then, take care.